And Rob, you have joked, but maybe there is some truth to it, about LeBron moving to L.A., going to the Lakers to be Meryl Streep. You know, and, yep. and, and you know, to be a Hollywood but you know what I mean, right, yeah. right. More about uh, Hollywood, and not, not that he... If he won, fine, but that wasn't his motivation. Right. He wanted to be out in Hollywood. He wanted to be a mover and shaker. Uh, yeah, get and ready you want to win, but it's not eating it's, at him like, right. he is, like he's, I know he's comfortable he's with comfortable his legacy. He's comfortable with his legacy yeah. no matter what. If he, if he doesn't win again, it's not like he he didn't win. He won three. Yep. Uh, he's got all these other records. About, he, he will eventually pass Kareem Abdul-Jabbar scoring. All, he has all of those things like laid out for him. So I know that. But I think he came here. For other reasons. Well, you look, I mean, because because you could say, and I said it before, that look, he's a business mogul. He's even got interest things going on in Hollywood and L.A. while he was in Cleveland, while he was in Miami. But there are things he's doing now that if you, you – I don't even know if you could do them if he was in Cleveland or somewhere else. But it certainly makes it easier to do them while you're here in L.A. And that, I mean, all these shows, Shut Up and Dribble, the documentary, uh, The Shop, where he's, I'm sure that's somewhere in L.A. and all the stars. Snoop you mean my Dog, TV Nas, idea that Drake, he stole from guys. me? <laughs> <laughs> you, you had it years ago. You got to you know? admit, you seen no, it. You, you had it years ago. Um, I don't know if you could have got all those superstars on there. but Can't you know, do it. <laughs> I, all right, but I had the concept. You had the concept. And um, he's doing that, and then he's doing his more than an athlete with ESPN on ESPN Plus. And look, they've been very entertaining, very good. But on more than an athlete, he really started a, a, a discussion and some controversy uh, with these comments that he made on his last episode. That one so right there made me the greatest player of all time. For That's so many I felt. reasons. I was super, super ecstatic to win one for Cleveland because of the 52-year drought. Like, I was ecstatic. Like, obviously, I showed that, that the first wave of emotion was when y'all, everyone saw me crying. Like, that was all for 52 years. Everything in sports was going on in Cleveland. And then after I stopped, I was like, that one right there made you the greatest player of all time. You know, everybody was just talking how they were the greatest team of all time. Like, it was the greatest team to ever assemble. And for us to come back, you know, the way we came back in that fashion, I was like, you did, you did something special. That's probably one of the only times in my career I felt like, like you did something special. I haven't had really had time to really like sit back and think, but that, that, that was, was a moment. Now, now, Chris, I, I want to defer to you only from this standpoint. You grew up uh, in Akron and, right? Well, Cleveland. Cleveland. Lived in Cleveland. Lived in yeah. Cleveland and worked there and all that. Northeast Ohio. Okay, in so in that area. And you also... Uh, Especially earlier on, had a relationship with LeBron. Right. We're around him, spent some time. Not as much now, right? Yeah, but you now, did. I don't see him as much now. But okay, yeah, but you used, did. I used to spend a lot of time around okay. him. Okay. When you heard that, and I'm not, you know, you could say I'm a LeBron hater or whatever you want to put me up. But, but what did that, what was your first initial reaction to hearing that, you know, come out of his mouth? Well, I was surprised he said it because... You've never heard Michael Jordan say that. You've never heard Kareem Abdul-Jabbar Jabbar say it. And, and when you talk about Michael and even Kobe, who's not really in the conversation, but a lot of people, young guys especially, and even guys in the league, former players, will say who Kobe idol, who should idol, who be. Who idolized but Kobe. But I'm talking I get about it. guys that played against Kobe. No, I know. I, I get they it. They think he should be in the conversation. Kobe, though, has never said it. And, and then Michael and Kobe – you are talking about guys, and I think LeBron has a killer instinct. It's a spectrum, you know, but he doesn't have it to the level that Jordan and Kobe had it. No, that's time. To, that's times ten right, for those guys. Right, and they have not said. You know, each one of them, every time they stepped on the floor, it was "I'm the best ever," but they've never said it publicly. So I was shocked that he said it. Now let me tell you a little story. He was talking to Rich Paul, his agent, Maverick Carter his business manager, and uh, Randy Mims, his personal manager, chief of staff, as they call him. And after they won that series, you know, I was there. And the media on the court, the players on the court, everybody's going crazy. Like, we're all there. And Rich, I was talking to Rich Paul, and he was telling me. So I, I'm, you're going to see why this. I'm saying this. He was coming up to me saying, he's the greatest, Chris. He's the greatest ever. He's the GOAT. Jordan never could have done that. So I'm sure he was saying the same stuff with LeBron. And 
I'm not saying that's where the thought came from. LeBron probably just sincerely thinks he's the greatest. But, but that's that whole crew, and that's what they were thinking, at least Rich and LeBron. And so I, that's where a lot of this comes but, from. But, but, but to me, it's just not classy, and it's without humility. You don't need to say that. I don't need to walk into the club and tell everybody – I'm the best looking guy in the club or I'm the richest guy in the club. Right, right. You don't have to announce that. Do you do you know what I'm no, saying? No, I, I totally and, well, th- Michael Jordan, here's what he said. This is from a 2009 interview with, with, Wilbon, with Michael right? Wilbon. Yeah. I don't want it in a sense because I think it disrespects Will Chamberlain, uh, Jerry West, you know, all the guys that prior to me I never had a chance to play against. You know, what everybody's saying I am, I never had the chance to compete against other legends that that was prior to me. Um, And when I hear it, I cringe a little bit because, you know, it's it's a little bit embarrassing because no one knows, you know. I never had the chance once again to play against those guys, you know. Um, I would love to have played against them, but I never did, you know. And for you to say that I'm better than him, I mean, it's your opinion. You know, it's their opinion. I accept that as their opinion. If you ask me, I'm, I would never say that I, I'm the greatest player. You know, and that's because I never played against all all the people that represented the league prior to Michael Jordan. If you didn't like Michael Jordan and you heard just heard that for the first time, don't tell me you don't like him a little bit more. No, I, I, I I'm with you. And, and look, I've, that's the humility I'm yeah, talking yeah. about. And you were right, Chris, on the court against comp- competing. He probably tell you I'm the best. I I I bust right, you up on right. this court. You can't play with me. You know you're not on my level and all that. All the, but he would never the great trash talk. Right. But he would never pat himself on the back. He said I would never say that. That's not for you to say. And I'm telling you, this is where LeBron disconnects with some people. Well, and I think to your point about Jordan being this great trash talker, but then never he's never going to say off the court I'm the greatest ever. The reason he would talk trash to you and maybe say, I'm the greatest, I'm better than you, was because he could settle it and show you and prove it to you right then and there on the court. And I I think Jordan was being sincere. A lot of people are going to say, oh, Jordan was a killer. He was just saying that. I know Rob G thinks that. But there's another clip going around on social media. After Jordan won his third straight championship with Chicago in the early 90s, he was asked about, you know, how it felt and this and that. And he, what he said was, this is great that I can say I did something. I'm paraphrasing. But that Isaiah, Isaiah Thomas, Larry Bird, None of them ever had and ever. Magic Johnson never did. And they all won tw- – well, Bird didn't even win two in a row. But okay. Magic and, and Isaiah won two straight. Right. My point is this. Notice he didn't say what Wilt never did – or what Those Kareem never – he said it about guys he played against. Yes. He didn't bring up the guys that he never got a chance to play against. And so that – I think Jordan was being sincere when he said that. And and here's the pro- – I mean, look, like you said, it's there, it, it comes off as arrogant. It comes off as disrespectful to the others. But the other thing and is it's this. Not, it's not classy. It just No, I, the other thing is this, Rob. It opens you up. To, now, granted, LeBron gets a lot of scrutiny as it is. Right. But unless your record is impeccable, now it opens you up to even people that may have been on your side. Or some of them may say, well, hold on, LeBron, you're not the GOAT. Now it really raises the level of scrutiny even higher because you and I, we don't think he's the GOAT. I think Jordan's the GOAT, I, and I think it's clear cut. I, I think it's clear cut, and it just – it just speaks like LeBron's trying to speak it into existence, like to put it out there in people's heads. I'm going to throw out the number, 877-99 on Fox, 877-996-6369, if, well, if you want to chime in as, on, on as, LeBron. As you said, throwing it out there, and I said this when we, we co-hosted Undisputed yesterday, I, and I'm serious about this. I don't know if it's true at all. I haven't talked to anybody in LeBron's camp about this, but I wonder – if LeBron is trying to do the Muhammad Ali pattern. But the only thing well, is – Well, let me but let ahead. me explain. Okay, okay, let me yeah, explain. do that. Uh, my, LeBron has said he wants to be like Muhammad Ali. His, one of Muhammad Ali's ex-wives, his second wife, 
said that LeBron is the Muhammad Ali of this generation. And LeBron has said he wanted to be an Ali in terms of being a global icon, direct quote, global icon. Of all the stuff that Ali did outside of his sport, LeBron, he's known for that as much as for what he did in the sport. LeBron is following that pattern. And I want, you know, one of the things, Rob, that makes us feel, and as great as Ali was as a fighter, one of the things that makes us feel he was the greatest, even if it's subconsciously, was the fact that he con- he told us he was the greatest. He drilled it into our head. Now, he did it in a funny way. He did it with rhymes. He did it, you know, braggadociously. Like, he did it in a different way than LeBron. But I'm just wondering, and I, I'm just wondering if LeBron is thinking, let me say it. Because LeBron's smart. He knew this was going to start a conversation. So let me start putting it out there so people really start believing it or saying it. But the difference is with boxing, which is an individual sport, and a, and a salesmanship in boxing. Well, there wasn't before Ali. But I'm saying— He was the first. He was unusual to come out like Joe Lewis no, didn't but talk all like that. that. Marciano. No, but, but you know, I'm they saying— They didn't talk like that. Right, but I'm saying it's, it's almost like when you go to these press things and, then and you know, like this is what people Nowadays, do. Nowadays, yeah, it's definitely— yeah. But I'm copied saying— Ali, yeah. And Ali was a, was a polarizing figure. There was no in between. Either you people lo- hated either, him because no, of I was gonna say first. either even you, blacks, even you loved Muhammad Ali or you hated him because he was so braggadocious. I'm pretty. You remember all the yeah, stuff he used yeah, to say. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. just that. Everything. I'm pretty. And, I'm and this. Before, I'm that. Before he beat Sonny, listen. You you said it on the show. Right. He was saying that before, before he won the championship. Before he won the championship, I'm the greatest, and he hadn't even won the championship. So that's what I'm but saying. But to your point. People, including African Americans, because now Ali is, as much as everybody else loves him, black people really love him because he stood up for for black people so much. My father was like, we we hated him. him. When he was Cassius Clay, we hated him. He bragging, he's this, he's that. Sonny, we wanted Sonny Liston to knock his block off. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. He He was the perfect polarizing guy because there's no middle ground. Either you all in or you you were out on him. Right. 